Mina, Ohio Gazimus, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Coming at you with 2 Chronicles chapter 9. If you ever heard of the Queen of Sheba, that's a biblical reference coming from this chapter right here. And of course, the corresponding spot in 1 Kings, talking about this particular part of King Solomon's life. And the Queen of Sheba is simply blown away. It is said in 2 Chronicles chapter 9, verse 4. Um there was no more spirit in her. Now that doesn't sound doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So let me back up to verse 3 so you'll know why there was no spirit in her. And when the queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his servants, the service of his waiters and their apparel, his cupbearers and their apparel, and his entryway by which he went up to the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. And she had, apparently she had enough spirit to comment on the situation because in ver verse 5 she says, Then she said to the king, It was a true report which I heard in my own land about your words and your wisdom. However, I did not believe their words until I came and saw with my own eyes. And indeed the half of the greatness of your wisdom was not told me. You exceed the fame of which I heard. Happy are your men and happy are these your servants who stand continually before you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God, who delighted in you, setting you on his throne to be king for the Lord your God. Because your God has loved Israel to establish them forever, therefore he made you king over them to do justice and righteousness. She proceeded to give him several gifts, and he proceeded to give her several gifts, on potentially more than what she had given to him. And a lot of the times Christians will look at this and say, why can't the church be like that? And I have to admit, I'm one of those Christians. I look at what Solomon did and what the Lord did in him, and I say, why can't the church be like that? Why can't the church put out the best stuff, do the best stuff, have the highest quality in everything, be it music or art or acting or public speaking or administration or just a demonstration of love and peace and joy and fellowship in giving to their fellow man, of sacrificing for the fellow man. Why can't the church do all of that? And there is some truth in that. King Solomon showed the world how great God was in his wealth, in his opulence, in his wisdom, in his glory, and in his splendor. And of course, we need to keep in mind then Solomon in all his glory wasn't even dressed as beautifully and as wonderfully and as gloriously as a simple flower of the field. In all of his glory, he could not match a single rose because God clothed the rose. There comes a point where we have to take a step back and say, how did Solomon get there? And Solomon got there. It was also mentioned in this chapter that during his reign, all of Israel's enemies, all the peoples, all the ites, so to speak, that lived in the land of Israel were completely subjugated, were completely under Israel's power, and they couldn't fight or defend themselves anymore. And he still didn't kill them. He made them his servants. Now, I commented on that in another video several months back, so I won't revisit that right now at this point. But what Solomon had was built on the work of generations. A Solomon does not just rise up out of nowhere. A Solomon does not just take the reins, grab a hold, take control, and then just maintain that for the rest of his life. A Solomon doesn't arrive overnight and just gloriously triumph in everything. Solomon was the result of generations of godly men and women serving the Lord, loving the Lord, culminating in David, destroying all the enemies around Israel, preparing all the stuff to build the temple of God. And then Solomon had a peaceful reign in which he was able and allowed to do and build all the things that he did. A lot of prep went into that. So, kind of like, I'll use myself as an example. I'm going into YouTube, and I don't know what the heck I'm doing. There's no way, no way 
I'm going to be able to immediately compete with Markiplier, with Jacksepticeye, with PewDiePie, and any other great YouTuber name um, far less popular than those three. You know, simply, <clears throat> simply 1 million subscribers is so much bigger and more glorious than I could possibly imagine right now. I went into this blind. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I need to build. I need to grow. I'm not going to just come in all at once and everything is going to be better because it's for Jesus. No. I need to learn how to record. I need to learn how to be on camera. I need to learn how to edit. I need to learn how to feel the pulse of the crowd to generate videos that are popular and will be relevant to people and will be interesting to people while at the same time maintaining that Jesus is Lord and Everyone is a sinner in need of forgiveness. Yeah, try to be popular while telling your entire audience, by the way, you're all going to hell. You need to repent, you sinners. I don't usually word it quite like that because people don't often perceive the love that I have for them when I say it that way, but the statement that I made is true. God loves us, therefore he died for us because he doesn't want us to burn in hell. He wants to forgive us of our sin. He wants to heal our land, as I talked about just a few days ago. And all this in the middle of a channel that I am still, I, I don't even know how the, um, I got my editing software finally, and now I don't quite know how to operate it and function and make it work and make it shine and make it the best it can be. I'm still in the dark on that. So... I'm several steps removed from even David, but that's okay. Hopefully, as I progress and as I move forward, hopefully, something will come of this channel. Something will come of me. Even if it doesn't come of this channel, that I'll grow as a person, I'll grow closer to the Lord, and I will be an example of what Jesus can do in a life that's dedicated to Him. Guys, hopefully this video was helpful to you. Thank you very much for watching it, especially if you stuck with me this far. I know it was a bit of a longer one. I love you, and God bless.